Hey guys, fresh new video. So right now I'm gonna start working on this thing. Um, so the first thing I wanna do is cut the welds so I can slide the main part of the frame here that's attached to the tongue. I don't know what that'd be called, but I wanna slide this all the way to the back to short up the trailer a little bit. So I bought just a uh, big old grinding disc and there goes all my plastic. I have to grab some more wood. Um, but I bought a big old grinding disc um, I bought one of these to sand down the frame so I can paint it. I got an extra pattern in here. And I bought this so that I can clean up the seams of my wheels and get those silicone so I can get tires mounted on those later this week. But uh, for right now, I just want to get started on the trailer. Just get it, get it cut. Um, maybe even weld it today if the neighbor let me use his welder. I've never really welded before, but give it a try. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to get this thing cut out and slid back. All right, so I got it all cut apart. I cleaned up like the edges and stuff and moved it back to where I want it. Um, I was gonna see if my buddy could weld it for me, but he's kind of busy. So I think what I'm gonna try and do is see if I could borrow my neighbor's welder and give it a shot myself, you know, and see what I can do. Um, Cause if I do something like terrible, I could always have him fix it, I think, I hope. But you know, it'd be decent to give it a try myself. So I think uh, I'm gonna try it. But yeah, I'm just gonna like, Put a tack here, a tack here, same thing on, you know, the back and the middle. Um, and then, well, I'll probably do the front and the back. And this one got pushed up a little bit from when I was just beating the crap out of it, so I'll have to hammer that back down and then do that one. And then I'll try to do, like, a bead on the sides and the top. I don't know, we'll see how it works. Um, I'll probably run a couple of bolts through just, you know, for my sanity. But this would be perfect, it'll be the perfect length. Um, and then I just have to work on, like, making the rest of it so that I can put tires on the back and, and all that. So let's see how it goes. All right guys, so I got it all welded. Put some just paint stuff over it, but you can see my, my bird shit welds here. I mean, I guess it's not terrible. This one's terrible just cause there's a big old hole there. So I didn't even really weld that one, but I don't know. They're not looking very good, but at the same time, they're not bad for my first welds, I think. I don't know. It's hard to judge yourself on stuff like this. But, I mean, it holds it good. I can, you know, jump on each side and it doesn't break. And the corners too. So, I'm gonna send it. Um, I might throw like a bolt through the center here um, in the front, middle, and back just to, you know, make sure. But I think that's good. Got that shortened up quite a bit. So, I have my bird shit welds here. Mason welds for a living, so he's gonna fix my bird shit welds. Very appreciated. Oh no, it's starting to rain, bro. Yeah, it is. It's gonna huh. make this shit fast. Yeah, dude, fast. So you hook this guy up to? Um, I just went to, I just grinded a spot over here and connected to that. Okay, perfect. But, I mean, just to that is probably not gonna make contact. Yeah. I'll have to grind it again. Yeah. So he ground down this weld, and I actually did an all right job. He's gonna go back over it just because he took it down, but I don't know, it makes me feel kind of good. I kind of did a decent job there. Hell yeah. And he's Mr. Welder, man. So I'll take his word for it. Hopefully he's not lying to make me feel good. Nope. I hope. Nope. I don't lie. <laughs> he don't lie. <laughs> no, not, not when it comes to a good or bad job. But yeah, he's gonna go over that one, because that one is fucking garbage. That one is espresso. espresso. That was, that, was yeah. that was a tough one, but... <laughs> yeah. Hold it. There you go. Nice. I just want to get that bottom. Nope.
That one's solid, I just wanted to make it. So the trailer is painted with some bed liner. I painted this yesterday. I didn't record any of it just because I, I didn't have my GoPro on me. But I didn't take down any of the rust or anything. Uh, I just went over it because, I don't know, laziness and just didn't really feel like it. Um, so that's done. Now I just gotta do the flooring, which I think I'm gonna do like a vinyl deck flooring. Um, I was thinking about doing wood, but wood's gonna rot over time. That vinyl is pretty good. Uh, I also ordered like tail lights. I ordered a wiring kit. Uh, I ordered uh, a drop hitch um, for the FRS. I ordered like the wiring kit for the FRS. Um, I ordered pretty much everything I need. And hopefully it's all here by Friday because I want to pull up to the track with my trailer. It'd be sweet. Um, I also took my fronts off because I have to get them flipped. As you can see, the uh, insides are getting pretty, pretty dead. Um, I also replaced my inners, my inner tie rods. Um, so now I got to do an alignment yet. You can see it's kind of, kind of goofy. Like this wheel's kind of out. Um, I gotta do that, and I also got the other wheel sealed up, so oh, I gotta bring this and put this in the shop. Um, so now I can have Chris put those tires on for me. He's also going to be welding my uh, receiver to the hitch. Um, also I got the bracket on, so now my bumper is actually on. Uh, yeah, making moves, so the hitch is gonna go right here. And then I'm just going to have him weld it to the bar, have him weld it to this bar here. Um, and then I'll just use a drop hitch if I need to lower it. And if I don't need to use a drop hitch, I'll just keep it around for, you know, whatever I need it for. Um, yeah, look at those tires are getting kind of chopped. It'll be nice to get those tires mounted on the SSRs for Friday. Um, I, I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to go on Friday. If everything's ready by Friday, I'll go, but otherwise, I don't know. We'll see. I, I gotta line this thing, I gotta finish the trailer. I've got a lot of stuff I gotta do by then, but I, I guess we'll see how it all goes. So this is how I do alignments. Whoa, that's trippy. My light is like being weird. Um, but basically I just take two tape measures like this and I set them down in the front and the back of the tire. And then what I'll do is I'll make sure they're as close as I can get them to the same spot. So you can see they're like right on the inside of that tread line there. It's kind of difficult with these tires since they're so thrashed, but then all I do is I'll come over here and I'll measure, you know, how many inches I have to that same tread line. And I'll do the same thing on the back. And right now I'm right at about 67 inches with maybe just a nut hair of a uh, toe in. See if I can get my tape measure stuck here, probably not. Um, but yeah, I've got just like a very small amount to toe in, which is all right. So I'll, I'll you know, take it for a drive, see how it feels. Um, but I have to wait for Chris to get my tires done first. I just figured I'd align it while I wait for the hitch to be delivered or the receiver. Um, Cause it's just one less thing I have to do. You know, if I'm gonna make it out to the track, It'd be nice to have everything done. Um, but yeah, that's how I do my alignments. And then what I'll do is I'll check that. I'll see what I need to adjust and then I'll jack up the car, adjust the tie rods, put the car back on the ground, measure it again. Well, I'll make sure the wheel centered and then I'll measure it again. And then, you know, once I get it pretty good, I'll, I'll call it done. Um, and I mean, it's pretty good now. So we'll see how it feels. If it feels good, I'll run it. Um, if I get time to get it in and get it aligned, I will, but I don't know, you know, when that's gonna be. So I don't even know what the last thing I recorded is. Um, I lost the bag that has all my batteries in it for my GoPro, so I haven't really been able to record anything for a while. Um, but I got all four SSRs back on the FRS. So you got the rear ones with some uh, 215 40s. Um, can use those for drifting. And then I got the trailer finished, so I got the frame all painted. Uh, I didn't sand it at all. It literally just bed linered over the rust. So I'll probably have to redo that sometime. Um, and I got these little hold downs on here. Uh, I got these ratchet straps. So I got my parts bin. So I've got like control arms, uh, some adapters and a bunch of other shit in here. And then I have my pack out. 
So I've got all my tools in here. I should actually make sure these are, are tight. I went for a test drive yesterday to see how everything works. But I just got some, you know, kind of cheap Amazon straps, but they seem to be holding pretty well. And then I've got my wheels in the back, my spares. So I've got the big, big boys, the 235s, and I got the tiny boys. These are the 215 40s, so the same size that is on the car right now. Um, but I just have ratchet straps holding the wheels in. They seem to be working pretty well. I mean, they're pretty tight. They're not going anywhere. Even if I kick them, it doesn't really move a whole lot. I also have the uh, lights wired, so I have the trailer all wired up. Um, and then in the trunk, let me open that up. I've got just the wiring kit um, over here. I just left all the extra power wire looped up there because I want to actually redo that. Um, I slept it in really quick yesterday so I could get the track today. And then I kind of have the same thing in the engine bay. I kind of have it looped up and then just zip tied um, up out of the way for now. But I'm just waiting for uh, Gracie to get home and then should be heading out to the track. So it's the day after that event. Um, it went pretty well. I was using the Federal 595s. These are 215-40s in the back at first. And I kept on gripping up real bad. Like I'm pretty sure these are still at like 50. I had them at 50 PSI and I was still gripping up. Um, I mean, I was clutch kicking and like flicking super hard and I would get sideways for a little while. But then it, on the longer uh, sweeps, I just grip up really bad and then it was game over. Um, so I ended up putting the old dry rotted uh, 235 40 uh, Federals on and these ones were great. I mean, I ran them until they turned to slicks, so <laughs> that's that's how that went. Uh, but the trailer held up really nice the entire drive. Uh, my car definitely needs an alignment though. There's a, a lot of like bump steer. I'd hit bumps and my car would kind of just jerk to the left or the right. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've I've done hand alignments for a long time, but you know, I'm driving an hour to the track each way. It's definitely gonna be a good idea for me to get this thing actually aligned. Um, so I'll have to get that done sometime before this weekend, before the big event. But yeah, the trailer did really good. Uh, the wheels, you know, stayed. These rush straps worked good. My pack out and my tote stayed. My tote kind of got a little crunched, but uh, that's all right, I suppose. Um, it was really nice to have this because all my all my stuff's right on the trailer. You know, next weekend I'm not gonna bring all four wheels. I just wanted to bring all four wheels today because I wanted to see how well it's gonna work. But for next weekend I'll probably just bring two, um, two extras, or maybe I'll bring these two as well since it's a two-day thing. I'll probably run through tires pretty pretty quick with the way I've been driving. Uh, but, yeah. But I got some stuff to do today. Uh, so I'm going to empty my trailer, put everything away. And then later today, Alex might be coming out and he might be helping me wire the other shot. Um, so I got a electrical box, or two electrical boxes, and then two switches. So what I'm going to do is, like right where this one is, but on the other shot, I'm going to put a switch so that my outlets are switched and then I'm going to run, you know, conduit out to like where my loft is over there and then I'm going to put the outlets back there 
So like over here we have this and we have, you know, the extension cord going along, which is, you know, it's nice. We have electricity, but it kind of sucks because we have to use an uh, extension cord. And um, pretty soon here I'm going to be putting my, my box and stuff back over there. Um, I really like sharing a, a unit with Matt, but once winter hits, we are not going to be able to fit two cars in here um, efficiently. So I think I'm just going to have to go back over to my space. Sad times. Um, but once I get all that stuff over there, you know, we'll each have our own room. Uh, or we'll each have room, basically. And then we can work on stuff efficiently. Alex brought some uh, conduit out here. Might have to get a little bit more, I think. But, oh well. I got to uh, empty my trailer. I got the XB out here. And I didn't bring the keys, so I'm going to have to run back home to, uh, to move this thing. So it's been a while since we've seen this, huh? So um, back on the other side, um, I've got a lot of stuff to store, and with me and Matt sharing the other side for doing stuff and this side for storing stuff, it didn't work out too well. Um, so I'm gonna be like working on this one again, just cause there's not enough room. Me and Matt are still cool. He's the bomb still, but yeah, there's just not enough room. Um, and to work in here, I need some electricity, and I hired an electrician. So, this is what we got so far. So we got off the light switch, goes down, goes across the wall here, and then it goes to my bench, and this is all in conduit. And then from my bench, it goes inside the bench basically, and there's an outlet behind my box for my box. So if we look, you can kind of see it maybe. So I have electricity <clears throat> for that stuff. Um, he's coming back out today because the switch box doesn't have a neutral. So we have to pull a neutral from way up there in the light. So that's going to be fun. Um, and then once he gets that done, he just has to pull the wire through that conduit. And then it's a piece of cake. And wire it all up. Plug stuff in. We have power. So we put on a new switch so it's black and it's pretty and it matches everything else. Um, but then like I showed earlier, the conduit goes over and then it goes into this outlet here, which I'm just gonna use for like a fan when I'm out here or if I need to plug in my Dremel or soldering iron over here. Um, and then I've got the one behind my box back there. You can kind of see it. Um, that's just for my box so I can plug in like my phone charger, my speaker charger stuff like that. Uh, so now I just gotta clean up, organize stuff. I need to put up like shelves over here for all my oil and stuff like that. Um, I, I got an oil cooler for the FRS. I got it used from a guy in New York. He shipped it out, should be here on Wednesday, which it'll be installed by the time this video is done and edited probably. But I also got some oil. I gotta do an oil change. I got a Canon Racer Boy filter. Um, so hopefully I get all that in before the big camping trip. I'm starting to get my stuff ready. So I got the cooler, my pack out, some chairs. I got like my tent up there and shit that I gotta bring down. Um, so I'll get that stuff all set up, get this thing packed for this weekend, and uh, should be a fun time. The only thing I'm not sure of is I don't know what I'm gonna use for spares because I have two of these co sizes that are kind of okay ish. Maybe I could bring them out to Chris and have him flip them. Um, that might help. I just know that those wheels are super floaty because they're so light and then the tires are pretty old um, and dry rotted, but I guess we'll see see what it comes down to. I need to wash my car. It's so, so dirty from like putting the bump running up and it's wet and all that. And I got rubber everywhere. So I got to clean that. Um, I also will probably cut my center console more so I can actually use a center console um, instead of having nothing in there. But yeah, other than that, I, uh, I need to check my alignment because it feels kind of goofy. So I'll probably get the co-size in the front and check that. Um, maybe bring it somewhere and have it actually aligned. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see how it all goes. But for now, I'm just gonna clean up the shop, organize everything um, now that I'm back in the original shop. All right, guys, so tomorrow is the camping event and I've got lots of stuff to do. Um, so I have to do an oil change, so I got a little mini drain pan I'm going to try out. I've got some oil, and then I've also got an oil cooler. 
Uh, I ended up getting a pretty good deal on this guy um, from uh, just a FRS page. Um, so I'm gonna get that guy on. And then I need to line my car. I was supposed to get it on a rack this week, um, but the shop ended up getting busy and then they were waiting for parts for a truck that was on their alignment rack and they never came and some big mess. Um, but I need to do that. I wanna wire my oil temperature off the sandwich plate. I wanna get the spats back on the back bumper. Um, and yeah, so I've got lots of stuff I need to get done. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is just put this thing back on the ground roll it back, uh, let it idle for a few minutes just to get the oil temperature up a little bit. Um, then I can drain the oil out, uh, get the new oil in, and then start working on the oil cooler. So I've got the oil drained now into my little pan. Luckily I didn't leak a whole lot. Um, and one thing I noticed is that my uh, oil plug gasket got a little goofed. So I'm going to have to see if I can find another one. I think I have one somewhere. Because um, I don't really want to use that again. <sighs> well, I'm not going to use that again. But I got the oil filter off. Um, now I have to get this stuff on. So I got to take the old threaded piece out. And then these pieces go on like so. So this will go on the bottom. Then it'll be the sandwich plate and then it'll be this top part. And then this goes through, um, but I'm just gonna clean everything up really well with some brake cleaner, um, clean everything up. I'll probably thread that uh, temperature gauge thing into there, which I have right here. So I'll thread this into there and get that in um, so I can have temperature or oil temperature and then go from there, I suppose. So um, this piece here, I got it all cleaned up. This is gonna sit in here like this and then the sandwich plate goes above it and then the top piece and then you thread the piece down uh, I don't actually have to take this out I was an idiot I don't know why I thought I needed to take that out but maybe if I actually you know looked at directions for shit idiot but um got this cleaned out it was kind of dirty so I cleaned it out as much as I could now I just got to clean out like the sandwich plate the top piece where the filter goes and get all that together so I got the oil cooler all on and installed you can see it's pretty sturdy here um, so I don't have the bottom part on where this usually would mount to uh, so what I did is I used the factory hole here I drilled a new hole for one of these rivet things here and then I just drilled a couple holes for some self tappers put those on and I got the lines running over the side and then got them on here got them all tight um, so once I get the oil plug back in I'll fire it up and you know make sure there's no leaks of course after I get oil in it but you know um, make sure there's no leaks and stuff like that and then see how much oil I have to add to fill this thing not exactly sure how that's gonna work but I guess I'll figure it out so everything's installed I got oil in here um, I ran the wire for the oil temperature into the gauge so we'll see if all this works I'm not sure if the oil temperature is gonna show anything for the first little while like showing the minimum so I guess I'll let it run for a minute and see if uh, it uh, goes up at all and uh, while I do this I suppose I'll check for leaks So I had this thing running for a while. Oil temperature does work. It was slowly rising. Um, so now I'm gonna do the alignment. And I kind of just like eyeballed it a little bit and it looked like this wheel had a little bit of toe out. So I gave it a little bit of toe in. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these 
snow tires to do the alignment because the wheels I tried using before were all chopped up and just garbage. So using these will give me a, a better idea of what the hell I'm actually doing. Um, also, so far no leaks on the oil cooler. No leaks anywhere. Um, I ended up reusing that drain plug because I need to drive tomorrow and Saturday. But so far it looks like it's not leaking. I'm gonna keep a very, very close eye on that. Um, and then I'm gonna just replace that, you know, as soon as possible. Even if I have to like clean out my drain pan, drain the oil, and then put the oil back in, cause that's kind of sketch. All right, so everything's done. I got the alignment done. I've got a 16th of an inch of toe in, which is all right for me. Um, oil coolers chilling there, look at all nice like. Um, got the wheels on, got them torqued. I got the rear spats on. Got those self tapped on and got some adhesive holding that on. So that's all good to go. Um, tomorrow morning, I'm gonna order a, a new drain bolt. Um, and then I'm emptying my drain pan now. This is kind of neat. I found this on the side of the road. It's just a big barrel that I'm just gonna fill with oil and take it to recycle it once it's full. Um, that's pretty neat. Uh, we got oil temperature, oil cooler, aligned. Uh, I finished putting all the bolts in this wheel. Everything is pretty much done for tomorrow. I can't really think of anything else I really want to do. So on that note, I'm going to end this video. I'm not sure how much I'm going to record at the event tomorrow and Saturday, but I'll try to record as much as possible. Uh, but leave a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more. And I will see you in the next one.